Okay, everybody, welcome to the next part where uh, we had some major, major changes. Um, so, Stroff was in the restraint pod B2 here, uh, decided to acquire this comp com. The comp com doubles the repair rating of crew member attempting to repair major systems. Um, and it may remote control comp pod. So that's from this chart over here. So when you go to repair any of these major systems, your repair rate is doubled, which in Stroff's case uh, would have been two plus two is four. And I say would have been because I'll lead you through what happened to Stroff first. Stroff moved out into the hallway. Uh, Stroff moved out of the pod and decided he would do a hasty move, which is moving two, one, two. Ran into this room and had to draw three tokens due to a die roll. Uh, the blind pig and mother were in the room. Um, so because he did this, that means that the critters are surprised, and that means they add to the to their intelligence and aggression rating uh, during their reaction phase. So, intelligence of seven for mother, intelligence of six for the blind pig, six aggression and six aggression for both of them. So we just added two to both of those for their first uh, reaction. Uh, so it brought it to the blind pig an 8-8 eight, eight, and the mother a 9-8. This meant that on our roll, the blind pig did nothing because he rolled a 9, which was out of the realm of the chart. And I'll show you that right here. So blind pig was an 8-8. Eight, eight. So if we look at 8 and go down to 8, the highest number is a 6. Anything over a 6 uh, means that nothing happens. So that's what occurred with the blind pig. The mother, unfortunately, uh, got really pissed off and um, went for the kill. Uh, so then I rolled the other stats for mother, and it was a 7 and a 9. Um, what I did before for Grendel, when it told me to have that number, it was in, It was only half of the number. It was supposed to be only half of the original number, just when referring to the charts to do your subtraction. It doesn't actually mean that the number went down, which again makes this, this outcome wrong. Uh, so everything that happened in that first phase was completely wrong. And I'll illustrate it a little more here. So his was at a nine. I've, I've since erased it because there was an attack point there. Um, the shield, if in this case it was still a nine, it would just mean that eight, seven, six, five. It would just be a five that you would use for that number when you're going impair minus shield. So in this case, that would have been a one for the table as opposed to a negative number, which it was, which leads us to the zero for the table. Uh, basically what happened is Stroff got his ass handed to him and ended up getting killed by Mother and he was only able to get one point off of Mother's shield right at the very last desperate move. So it was a bloodbath and there you can see what happens when you um, when you do a hasty movement because they have those bonuses for their first attack um, it can really play against you. now. I will say this though, because of the way that I figured out how to do a fight, it it made it a little more engaging. Um, I mean, obviously it took, what was it, uh, one, two, three, it took three fighting rounds for him to finally die because he was at three and then moved all the way down. Um, so I, I'm glad I figured that table out a little better. That That definitely made it more engaging to play as opposed to like a one hit and he was dead kind of thing. Uh, makes it a little more realistic, maybe. I mean, you know, as realistic as these people waking up in outer space battling a creature called Mother. Um, but either way, the outcome was the same. He got killed. So what happened to Jeopardus? Uh, Jeopardus decided to enter the hallway, ended up having to fight the golem, Intelligence rating for the golem was halved for this round. 
so that just meant we were using that as a three when we looked at our chart, a three and an eight. Uh, it ended up being as a kill. Um, his kill was a nine with a parentheses around him, with a bracket around him, which means that he got a bonus for that first attack. Uh, if the number representing this result is parentheses in bold type, the specimen makes a charge attack. Its impair rating is doubled and its shield rating is halved for that attack. So its impair rating was 8, which doubled it to 16, and its shield was at 8, so it brought it down to 4, which just meant that the calculations were different when we were subtracting numbers from impair and shield and etc. back and forth. The outcome of that was that uh, he got stunned. Golem is still alive and, and wide awake and kicking and raring for more. So because the Golem is still in the fight stage, what's going to happen is I'm going to roll to see if, um, if Jeopardus comes out of his stun and he's a four. So let's do that right now. So it's a three. So he is now awake again. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to see if I can leave this room um, in hopes that maybe I can get into this pod and find something that can help me in my fight. So Jeopardus' speed rating is a 5, which isn't bad. Uh, now we will roll for the Golem speed rating. Uh, golem speed rating is whatever the die roll is, plus 3. So 8 is 11. So we don't stand a chance because his speed rating is 9. So let's just write that down. Sorry for the odd camera angle here. Um, I'm only doing this because uh, we'll see what happens here. Jeopardus might be in the same situation. We might have actually just lost the game, um, which would be a bit of a bummer. This would be the shortest game ever. Uh, I think it's really... it's. It can really be a shit show if right out of the gate, like I was saying I think in one of the earlier videos, if you run into a really strong critter right off the top uh, where you haven't had a chance to gain any weapons, you haven't had a chance to get any bots on your side, um, it can be a real shit show. And I will also bring that up too. Because obtaining a bot is part of another part of the movement, I believe because I'm locked into this fight it doesn't allow me to see if the bot is alive and in working order rather in working order if it was the case I could get the bot on my side then it would be two against one which would up my chances but because I'm locked in this fight and I can't run away I'm stuck just fighting him uh, and I think it's it, it's something that I think Callendale brought up in the videos that he did about this game. That I'm really locked in and now with my other player gone and out of the game, I, I really don't stand a fucking chance, uh, to be honest. I mean, I might get lucky, but I've barely discovered any rooms. The chances I'm going to find some more critters are pretty high. My rating by the time, if I do actually end up surviving this fight, is going to be so low with no ability to heal myself yet that I'm in a, I'm in a bit of trouble here. So either way, I'm going to go through the motions and I'll be back right away to tell you the outcome of uh, this fight, which might be to the death. Okay, so it's been a little bit. We have a guest with us. Hello, Lily. How are you doing? Um, she woke up and is having lunch. Oh, they're swaving. Yeah, there you go. Um, so where did we leave off? We left off with uh, the end of the game, basically. So Jeopardus died uh, in his confrontation with uh, Golem. And everything pretty much played out as I thought. Now, the Golem got knocked down a little bit, but uh, I mean, let's face it, Jeopardus didn't stand a chance, so there you go, both dead. Um, so I guess it leaves me with my final thoughts about it, and uh, again, I can say that I see a little more now what uh, Callendale was saying in one of his videos, or what he was implying, that you can get locked into these uh, no-win situations, uh, especially when it's early on in the game. 
when, because Jeopardus was only in this pod, this is where he started, so it's not like he had another choice. I think he played it smart by just kind of having a look out there, but uh, that's the way of the dice, right? So three of them came and he has no choice, he can't exactly stay there forever. Um, I guess we could have tried to orchestrate something where both players came over to battle the one golem. I guess that could have been a strategy, but again, that means Stroff getting from there through some more unexplored rooms before he gets over to help him. Um, so it's kind of a bummer that it ended like that, but it also is... I don't know, I kind of, one thing that I do like about these type of games is that they can mimic uh, loosely quotationed uh, real world experience, you know. Um, this very situation could happen in if you're looking at a sci-fi movie, you know. Now this ship is now the one that's stranded out in space that the sequel movie or the next movie is going to stumble upon and find the bodies and start finding the aliens and discover the story of what happened on uh, the BSM Pandora, which I find very cool. Um, the thing that I also wanted to end off on was this whole hasty action and now it's completely evident why it's called that. It was a really stupid decision to go from there two rooms into there because I was met. I should have been more cautious. I could have stayed in this room, scanned that room, scanned this pod, scanned that room and then taken the best of those three options you know maybe there would have been some weapons that appeared there maybe that pod is is something spectacular as far as like maybe it's a medipod or something that's going to heal me up to nine before I go to attack something who knows uh, some armor and a robot that I could have remotely controlled to go there who knows a million varieties and variations of things um, overall, I, I do like the game. Uh, this one just happened to be a bit of a, a bummer, a bit of a downer ending as far as it ended so fast. Um, yeah, and like I said, poor old Jeopardus, he just didn't stand a fucking chance, did he? I mean, he had no other choice but to go and try to attack or run away, which is what he tried to do that turn. You know, we had the attack phase. When he came out from his stun, we rolled to see the speed of uh, the golem, and it just turned out there's no way that we could outrun an 11 with our meager 5. Uh, that was kind of his last resort to get out of that engagement. So there you have it, uh, the wreck of the BSM Pandora. Um, Obviously, there's a lot more to this game than we got to explore here, but uh, hopefully this gives you kind of a taste of it. By no means is this video supposed to be a complete run-through and breakdown of every single rule. Um, I hope I explained the few rules and we, we pointed out the mistakes I was making, so if you do try to print out and play this game, you can not start with that same mistakes. Um, yeah, I'm going to look for some more games and, and hopefully the next one that uh, we do a video on will be My and Son Aztec Destiny, uh, which is basically two games in one. There's a simpler version that you can play and then the Aztec Destiny is kind of the more advanced version. Uh, suffice it to say, I've really, really enjoyed making this game and printing this sucker out and laminating and making the little chits and the tokens and stuff. Uh, it's been a really, really great experience and that's kind of an added bonus to the whole gaming experience for me right now. So uh, thanks very much for watching and uh, we'll talk to you next time.